Hello everyone. I'll be getting some comments about trying to use VS Code uh, for your development environment. So today I'm going to show you how to use this for uh, Java. And uh, this installation could work for both Mac and Windows. Uh, the only difference is that for Windows we'll have to set up our environmental variables when we download the JDK. But for uh, Mac uh, we will not have to do that part. So the installation is virtually the same. So let's take a look at uh, visual code. So the first thing we want to do is that we want to actually download the uh, Java SE Development Kit 12. Uh, that's the latest version and we would uh, either do a Google search and I'm actually going to put these link in my notes for the video so you could directly access this but you would scroll down to the particular operating system that you have choose the correct one and download it um, in my case I like the 64-bit uh, exe file so I would download that one once it's downloaded uh, I would open the file up and install it use all the defaults that are set and have it install uh, and have it run to completion. Once that's done, um, I will go ahead and actually go ahead and set up the environmental variables for Windows. So like in this case, if you're on a Mac, you would not need to set up the environmental uh, variables. But uh, I am on a PC currently, so I would have to set that up first thing you would have to do is find the directory that the JDK was installed. Now in most PCs it's going to use the default like I said if you follow all the uh, different areas and on my PC I'm going to go to Windows, Program Files and then go down to Java, JDK 12.01 and then the bin. Now inside of the bin uh, you have all these files in here including Java which runs the Java file and Java C which compiles the Java um, code that you wrote so this is the path that we want so we could just click in the bar and copy this control C and once it's copied I will now set up my environmental variables so in the search bar I'm gonna type out environmental variables and as I'm typing it you'll notice that it says edit the environmental variables for your account in the control panel after you type in environmental variables you should see a window like this and you could click this button right here once you do that it opens up another window where you would notice that there is a path under system variables here once you uh, identify the, this area you would double click and you have a whole bunch of stuff in here that's a part of your path. Now what I would do is at this point I would click on new and it would open up the bottom here and paste that path that you just copied. As you notice that I already have it in here. So I pasted it inside of this uh, window and once I pasted it inside of this window uh, I clicked the move up button I highlighted it and clicked move up and moved it all the way to the top so that it's if I case I have other JDKs that are installed um, it's actually going to find this one first uh, so that seems to be an issue in some other machines that you have multiple JDKs installed and it doesn't find the newest one so I move it onto the top of the path and just to make sure it finds that area first so then you would click OK I'm gonna click cancel but you would click OK and then OK again and OK again and now your environmental variables are now um, have been set up once again uh, Mac on a Mac you do not have to do that but for PC you do now for the rest of the in installation it'll be straightforward uh, the same for PC and Mac I'm going to pull this back up again the next thing we're going to do 
is download Visual Studio Code. So do a quick Google search for Visual Studio Code. You'll notice that this is the first thing that comes up and you could click on to download Visual Studio Code. Now keep in mind this is different from Visual Studio uh, like 2017 or 19 or whatever it may be. This is Visual Studio Code. Now uh, I would choose the appropriate operating system. I'm on a PC so I would choose Windows and 64-bit um, and you know the system installer is usually what I like to use, but you could use different ones, whichever one you feel most comfortable with. I just click on this. Um, once you download it, install it, and use the defaults as general. Um, and then you would have uh, something like this, just Visual Studio Code. Um, nice lightweight editor that could use for multiple languages. Uh, after you have that here, there was a couple things you'll need to install. Now, you would uh, you wouldn't know what extensions to actually install right away off the top of your head, but what Visual Studio Code does is it allows you to give you some hints on what you should install. So right here, there is an extensions area. I could show it to you now. I already have a bunch of extensions already installed, but I'll go over them. So the first thing you would want to do is go to File, um, new file and then you'll have an untitled file here uh, Visual Studio Code doesn't know which language you're about to use until you actually save the file so we'll go to file save as we'll call this test.java and I'm gonna put this on my desktop so I hit save so now it knows I'm gonna use Java and um, this is a common error. Um, it's a kind of like a it's a warning only. It's not an error, but it's it's common. And uh, I noticed that in some patches, it, in the update, it goes away. But for me, it hasn't as yet. So I'm still working on that. But it, this right now is just a warning, and you could just get rid of it. it. Doesn't affect anything that's going on. So in a clean install, once I've saved this as test.java, it would have had a pop-up window in the corner here telling you which extensions that it recommends that you install and I would just pick all of them in this case for Java the recommended extensions and there's the ones in stars that are recommended uh, is the Java extension pack so that's the one you're going to install so uh, right now I have it installed already but you would install the Java extension pack which would pop up over here as a help suggestion and while it's you know working and everything uh, I would just kind of wait until it's done and it, it usually installs really quickly and the second thing you would want to install is something called code runner that will not show up in your suggestions so you will actually manually have to type this in so in, you search the extensions in this box up here type in code runner and this will help you run your C, C++, Java, JavaScript, PHP, Python and various other languages to help road it and this what it does is that once it's installed it gives you this little play button in the corner so you could run it in your terminal and below Okay, so once you have those two things installed, Code Runner and Java Extension Pack, you actually could go ahead and start writing some code. But you'll notice that there's a couple funky things that will start happening. So he's like, oh, what's going on? Well, in that case, you need to actually adjust your IDE here, this Visual Studio Code, to your preferences. There's a couple preferences that, that I recommend that you kind of turn on. So let's take a look at that. We go to File, Preferences, Settings. And in my settings, I'm going to type um, Run Code. And when I type Run Code, I'm going to scroll down all the way down to where it says run code in terminal so this box by default is going to be unchecked and if you check this box which I did that means you'll be able to interact with the terminal when you run it that means that if you're taking an input from the user you should have this checked 
Otherwise, you won't be able to take any input in from the user because it would be in read-only mode. The terminal would be in read-only, and you won't be able to like access the terminal to enter any uh, code that you have to type in. For example, if you're asking for a person's age and you need to type in the age, you wouldn't be able to because the editor is just read-only. So you make sure that this is checked off so you can interact with the terminal. And number two, I want to save all files before run or save file before run. Um, so what I have these two checked off, what does that mean? Is that means that by default, uh, it doesn't automatically save, right? It just kind of stays there and lets you save manually. And then when you hit the play button, sometimes you forget to save and it's running the old version of your code that you didn't after you edit it. And then I was like, oh man. So this, this prevents this. So you turn these on so that it save all files or just save the file, the current file you're running, or maybe all the files before running. So turn both of them on to be safe. So that when you hit this play button, it saves the code and then runs it. So um, so you don't have to always remember to uh, save as your, uh, before you run your code. Okay, so those are two uh, those settings right here are some common ones that I like to turn on. Now you could investigate the rest to see, if, you know, for personal areas, but those are the two uh, most common concepts that I kind of cover for that. All right, so let's type some code. You'll notice that it has some IntelliSense right away. So public uh, class, uh, I want to test. And I'm just, I'm gonna type main here and then it pulls a main up for me. Um, you'll notice that it has the run debug that'll pop up. That's good. So SISO, hello class. All right, so I have some, uh, some basic code right here. Um, right now, I'm ready to go. You'll notice that it says one right here. That means you have to save, like you control S to save. But remember, we just turned that setting on to where if I hit the play button, it saves for me and then runs it. So I hit the play, that notification goes away, it saved it and ran it. And look at that, hello class. It's running in the terminal right down below. So there we go. We have a fully operational um, Visual Studio Code running for us. Now, for another concept, though, we might be saying to yourself, hey, this sounds great and looks great, but what if I have trouble? I'm a beginning student. I don't really know what I'm doing, and I need the professor's help or maybe some of the tutor's help. Well, one thing that's really great about Visual Studio Code is that it has something called Live Share down here. And Live Share, when you click on it, it's going to start a session right here. It's going to go ahead and have me sign in, my Microsoft account, or stuff like that, and and what's good about this live share is kind of minimize this right here. Um, if once I sign in and start getting a, a session going, uh, I'll be able to get a link in which I will be able to share with somebody. I could use Slack and um, or and paste it in there and send it to a colleague of mine or, or another student. Or I could, you know, send it by email or some other ways of sending you the link to where I you could view my screen and I could see your screen and we could edit this code together so I can make changes to this code uh, I'm actually gonna cancel this live share right now just in case okay so um, all right good so um, close more sorry I want to close those windows out all right so the you could share the code and I could see the code you're working on and I could say, hey, I noticed that you're missing uh, the letter N there or something like that. And I'd be like, oh, OK. And then from my home, I could hit the N and edit that for you. And then you'd be like, oh, wow, I didn't notice that. And and we could help uh, help with your code, whereas before is like kind of really hard. You have to send me your code or screenshot and you really don't see what I'm talking about as you're explaining to me we can live share this between each other and that extension um, right here just scroll down 
you want to get the live share extension pack okay and when you do that it'll install like live share live share audio all that so the live share extension pack is another extension that you should install so that you could uh, use that great feature especially if you're taking courses um, you could be able to share it with your professor or if you're working on teams you're working on teams everybody's uh, sharing some code there you want to be able to uh, use live share right here's another live share like tool there we go um, so that's another uh, great resource of this it's right there the notification let's make sure this thing is still working um, yep there we go so uh, that's just some ideas to using Visual Studio Code. Um, it's a great tool if you uh, love to program here in Java or um, maybe uh, C or C++. It's, um, it, I found it really useful and um, uh, hopefully you do too. Anyway, take a look at the uh, notes for the uh, video. I have uh, the links to where I got the material, including the uh, links for the Java SE Development Kit 12 and download uh, Visual Code Studio as well. All right. Well, thank you very much. See you in the next video.